This is part two of our Let's Play for the Wind Temple. And uh, back in part one, you mentioned how much you liked that they uh, really used the leaf a lot uh -huh. in this dungeon. Well, we're going to use it a lot in this part. And just like the first part where we spent a lot of time in two rooms, yeah. we're going to also be doing that in this part also. But at least have bigger rooms this time. Yes, no, the second room we're in is absolutely huge. And Probably one of my favorite rooms, actually, in this dungeon. It is a really cool area we get to here in a few Now, minutes. these Dexy Vines right here, oh my god, dude, I hate those things so much. They were annoying, and I feel like, and this was kind of the case uh, with the Stalfos that we saw back in part one, uh -huh. I feel like there were a few enemies that don't really fit the dungeon a lot. Were these in the uh, Forbidden Woods or not, do you know? I don't remember, to be honest. I can't remember. Like, I feel like, it's I want to <laughs> say like they were like throughout the entire game. Like, they, they, they were in there, so, but I don't really know. For some reason, I think in there in the Forbidden Woods, because... It just, I'm not exactly sure, but it feels yeah. like they recycled a lot of enemies from the Forbidden Woods in this dungeon. Which, again, kind of makes sense because they're both um, forests, but still. Or maybe yeah. they just recycled them from the game. Cause I mean, that, that there's, there's, be. there's really no new enemies in this uh, temple that I can think of. So Is this the first time we deal with the Wiz Robes, actually? Uh, the no. Um, I think, don't we have those in the Earth Temple? You know, people, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, our Earth Temple commentary was the last one we did for this video series, and that was almost a year it's ago. Been a so, while. <laughs> if there's some things we don't remember so much about Wind Waker, yeah. that's why. Or if there's things that we repeat that we've already talked about. <laughs> yes. Not that we ever do that in our no, commentary. No, we course. never. Actually, we've never done that. <laughs> no, no, never once. Now, one thing I didn't like, like, like using, like, um, bringing up all these trees right here, mm -hmm. and then, like, one of the, on the ledges like that. Like, right when I saw that, I knew, okay, we're getting hook shot yeah. in this uh, dungeon. So that's one. That's just. I don't know if it's a hint or not, but it just it's something that I, for once, picked up on very early. <laughs> Wish that would have happened in the first two rooms. <laughs> it definitely tells you that, like. You know, you're going to have to, like you said, use the hook shot. I uh -huh. know you, just, you just said this, but yeah, you yeah. have to climb across those trees. Well, there's, a repeat, gonna, there's a repeating thing yeah. you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to be getting that hook shot for quite a while, though, actually. Uh -huh. it's, I think we get that at the end of part three. Yeah, maybe. like, you know, kind of going like on the first part, our marsh and everything. I just love right there how you got some, like, you know, green and brown mm -hmm. grass. Like, I just, like, you got, like, it reminds me of, like, you know, patches of dead grass yeah. and... I don't know how exactly how to relate that. I just, I just like you it, like man. The look. I just like you it. You like the look. And like uh -huh. I said, the, it, it makes it feel distinct uh -huh. from the, for, uh, I almost said Forsaken again. Yeah. Uh -huh. Forbidden uh -huh. Woods. <laughs> and then this room right here, this is the main reason I love this uh, dungeon so much. Yep. This big room, and like that um, um little barrier right there is not open yet. Yeah. But when we open that later on in the view and just the verticality of this room, mm -hmm. like this made me such a huge fan of this dungeon. It, it, oh, it really does. There's me going off my soapbox <laughs> about this place. I just... I well, mean, it's cool though. Like you say that you, you can't really see it. But, like it's cool that you can look through the oh, floor that there is, a little yeah, bit exactly. and see how far down. It, it, go ahead. Yeah, it's like I know we don't really stop and look. Uh -huh. but just when you're watching Link walk. I around, mean, I'm like, wasting enough time. I should have. I know. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> so why. I enjoy did the view every now and then. I mean, right? I was trying to think. Okay, you're recording. Don't do anything too stupid. <laughs> but you know, it would be kind of cool. I guess you can always go back there and kind of look yeah. at it. So, but it is just neat. Like since we're not playing it, we're sitting here commentating uh -huh. our video. It's neat just to be able to, like I said, just kind of look down through that grate and see how far down. Well, later on, when we open this first part. There's another fan, or not mm -hmm. a fan, like a little barrier down below that that yep. covers the big fan. And so that was also cool, just looking through that, seeing that big fan, and like, oh yeah, I remember when I first saw that, like, okay, this thing turns on, but I actually never thought that it would shoot us up like this huge tunnel, like going all the way up, and just, I don't know, man, just this whole room just came <laughs> together so well. And it's funny because you just think, you know, it's okay, I don't like it that you just think like standing here, it doesn't look like there'd be a whole lot to this room. Oh, definitely, that, and that's the thing, like when that opens, like it's just so much that you didn't expect. Yeah. It, it's neat though, like you see it on a few of the walls, uh, like hookshot targets mm -hmm. on one or two of the walls. You're like, why would there be a target there? This room is, you know. Well, like I said, like when those trees came up earlier, I kind of yeah. knew right then that we were getting hookshot. So well, I kind of did know what those targets were. Uh, that's the one thing I figured out in this dungeon. Yeah. But those well, were hookshot targets. Well, what so. I meant was though is like, why are they like just here on these walls? It's like you're. It's not a very big room. It doesn't look like right uh -huh. now. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, that's so, true, true. Now, obviously, once we open up this floor, you see uh -huh. how big this room really Which is. Which I don't think we won't be doing that in this part, if I remember correctly. I think I it's think, part three. As I think, well. think you're correct. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Now we spend a little bit of time in this next room. Too. <laughs> uh, no, it's not this room. This room is like the uh, middle room. Before, oh, before, like the big. Uh, Flying room, I guess you can call okay, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Leaf, which is just an awesome room. Now, what I really liked was neat. Like, I've always been a fan of the boomerang in Zelda games, uh -huh. and in this dungeon, because especially Link's Awakening, yeah, especially Link's <laughs> Awakening, where it kills everything. Yeah, but like just having uh, so many of the pea hats floating around in the boomerang uh -huh. is very effective for killing them. So I like the fact that we get to use the boomerang. Yeah, please. Quite a bit in this dungeon. Well, I think it's the only way you can kill them at first to like get their like fan thing off. Yeah, now, I think, I think so too. after that you can shoot them with an arrow. You might be able to shoot them with the arrow the first time too. I'm not positive, but 
you don't want to waste your arrows though. By far, <laughs> the boomerang is the easiest. I know it's definitely something that we've talked about. It's like you usually get the boomerang very early in the game. Yep. And we always complain about like you know it's not used. Oh, like, you get it, and it's just not really used throughout the game. For example, Ocarina of Time. Yeah, oh, gosh. You get Jabu Jabu, and, and that's really not the only time that you much. use it. So <laughs> it's just nice having those P-Hat enemies around just to kind of bring back an item yep. that you not use that much throughout the game. And we're always, always fans of when you have to, like, when they make you go back and use items for the game. Uh -huh. I mean, like we've already said, we use the leaf quite a bit in this dungeon. We get to use the boomerang. Uh -huh. uh, well, yeah. I think for us, like one of the most frustrating things, the example of that is the spinner. And not oh, or not, I Twilight. I'm so mad at the wrong game, actually, now. <laughs> Twilight the Princess. spinner and Twilight Princess, like, that's, I think, both of our favorite weapons. Oh, is by like, far. In any Zelda game, and, like, you hardly use that thing at all. And so I know. it's just frustrating. Like, I want to use all the weapons throughout the entire game. Yeah, it's like, let them build on each other, you know. But, like, as you, especially in these games, Games where that you have to do the dungeons in a certain order. Uh -huh. You know which or the, the makers know which items you're gonna have. Yeah, and that's, that's what made Link Between Worlds great. Is that like you know you can yeah. kind of go out of order and stuff, and kind of had to figure out which weapon you need. So yeah. I don't know if I relayed that exactly <laughs> the, the right way that I wanted to, well, but... It's funny, though, like, the downside of that approach is, like, you rarely use more than one item in a dungeon, though. In Link, in Link Between, between worlds. worlds, yeah, that yeah. is true. So well, it's, that's up and down. It's, well, that's in every Zelda dangerous. dungeon, though, if you think about it. Like, in most Zelda dungeons, you only use one item. This is the rare one where we have use two throughout. And that's what I liked, uh, and I know we're kind of going a little off topic. What's well, 12 know, minutes? We, Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> we're not, like how people commentate like 30 minute videos, I don't Ooh, know. How we used to commentate 15 minute videos. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. 10 minutes and we're done. Yeah, but we uh, we recently commentated some videos for Minish Cap, and uh -huh. that dungeon, or that game did a really good job of using the items oh, throughout over the entire over game. throughout uh -huh. the game. Yeah. And kind of going with that, like, you know, the Palace of Winds, while it was 2D, was, you know, obviously a wind dungeon, so it was yep. kind of very, you know, very similar to this. Really? It was. Plus it actually, or the, uh, we use we we'll use a rocks cape, but I mean, it's, yeah, the rocks cape really. Uh, it's the same concept. Looks, yeah, it's the same concept as the leaf, and it looks almost exactly the same. So there's a lot of similarities between that dungeon and this dungeon. That's one thing. Like I was, we've always been a fan of the rocks feather or the rocks cape in the two D mm -hmm. games. When they introduced the leaf, I think this is the first three D game that had. It. I think it is. Um, yeah. Just as an item to let you like float around and uh -huh. soar around. I was really glad they introduced that. It wasn't exactly the same as uh -huh. the rocks feather or the cape. But it was similar. I do. It really was one of my favorite weapons in this game. Like, oh, and also the cell cloth and uh, Skyward Sword yeah. is kind of similar. Now the cell cloth, you can only go like vertic like straight up and down, yeah. whereas the leaf you can kind of float. So, you know, I never really thought about it like this, but I think that might be one of my favorite items in any Zelda game. The leaf, uh, yeah, like the leaf just how oh. it allows you because. You remember in the Earth Temple, like we had that, like right before the boss room, we had that big old oh, opening, yeah. like that we had to like fly, float across. Yep. that was just awesome. It right is neat. There. It is neat, and the way it's used in all th with the wind in this one, uh -huh. and also the way it gets used in the uh, forbid. I'm, I'm forbid was forbid 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 but uh, it's just, it's really well implemented. I'm a fan. Uh -huh. I didn't really thought about that uh, much until... until get a dungeon map right here. Okay. Yes. Took us forever, but... <laughs> <laughs> and it was actually really helpful in this dungeon because yes. there's a lot of levels in this dungeon. And like I said, man, it's just, this place is confusing. It is. And you're going to see that here, in, uh, I think it's in the next part, actually. Yeah, when we... Uh, you see how big and massive and confusing this thing is. Oh, yeah, really the uh -huh. <laughs> Now, I love this room right here. I had a little bit of problems with it, and mainly that's because my stupid magic meter wasn't upgraded. Yeah. Never would have thought that the big Octo Rocks. I remember, dude, I, felt, I fought them once. And you were and I was like, no I'm done with these guys. I'm not messing with them anymore. There's nothing. So I got some bullcrap uh, upgrade or item like or like a, bomb like a thousand or rupees like or something. I'm yeah. like, well, forget this and like. That magic meter upgrade killed me in this room. It, it is, it does because you really have to like you. That, I, that's why one thing I don't like about uh -huh. the leaf is that it uses magic. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, which makes no sense whatsoever. I know it's just a leaf, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but without that upgrade, it can be tough getting to some of the ledges and things that you need to. Uh -huh. And that will cause. Uh, I don't know if it hurts us too much. Like I said, well, it, it doesn't because we cut the video. Well, yeah, <laughs> we cut to where we actually got it right. <laughs> yeah, but a little later in this dungeon, like when we've got the hook shot, uh -huh. if you miss a ledge you got to hook shot your way all the way yeah, around uh -huh. to get back to it it can be frustrating sometimes now going on with the hub i think this is probably my second favorite room yeah in this dungeon just like you know going from the very start and just mm -hmm. like kind of floating like with the wind like yep. all the way across just i mean i don't know if it's like a really genius concept you know but, but it was cool. just i just i really liked it and i like the way they make the uh like the, the wind coming out of the fans look it looks like it's like almost like a little vortex yeah yeah or like a little vortex uh, well, what coming out the, of uh, no i'm thinking about scoured sword the arrows are kind of a oh, vortex yeah. and scoured sword so yeah yeah 
But then, like, the crates, too, just, I, I don't know, like, this, like I said, the atmosphere of this place is just, like, yep. there's a lot of good visuals, like, they had to put those crates, or they're not really crates, what do you want to call it, still doors or uh, yeah. whatever. Yeah, but they had I to know put, what you mean. <laughs> they didn't have to put those in there, but just, like, those little, like, fences it would be a good there word. There you go, fence, yeah. Those fences with small openings just, just add just a little <laughs> bit to it. Man, you talk about cutting it close to that Oh, meter. dude, I, like, <laughs> yeah, I barely made it across there. I was so happy when I saw that green spot. Yep. Like, on the floor right there. I was Definitely. like, because... I don't know how many times I missed. It, it was a few. I'll tell you that right now. Man, I absolutely hate the wizard room. You see that uh, skull shot right there? Yeah, that I what? nailed that skull. Headshot. <laughs> I'll call, I'll, good old Halo days. I will count that as a headshot. <laughs> oh, my God. If that thing would knock me off right there. Oh, you'd have been I so I mean, angry. I hated P heads from the very beginning of Zelda, but, oh, I would have found a whole new hate for him right yes, there. Yes, like you finally stuck your landing. And that would have been awful. Oh, my God. I might quit the dungeon. What it would have been dropped down to my least favorite dungeon <laughs> if that would have happened. One thing I'm really glad that the 3D Zelda games didn't really adopt that some of the 2D ones, when you get set on fire, you don't just run around like a chicken. Oh, that'd be horrible, off. man. Especially like on a little platform like well, this. Well, that doesn't happen in a lot of games. It definitely does happen in Minish Cap. Yep, yep. Cause Cause, what are they, like, I don't remember happening to many other ones, though. I'm trying to think if it does, actually. That's a good question. None, none of the handhelds, Link's Awakening, Oracle Games... Or no, no, no. Another three. I think the only one that's actually like that might be Minish Cap. Maybe huh. in the DS games it happens. I can't Maybe. really. I try to forget about the DS games <laughs> and the Oracle games, so I'm not really sure about that. But I'm just really glad that they didn't translate that to uh, oh. to 3D. <laughs> well, I mean, talk about the P head almost knocking me off. What if I would caught on fire and ran, and ran myself <laughs> off? Oh my. I mean, like, I would have laughed. Just don't get these me wrong. thoughts are making me mad right now. <laughs> just thinking about stuff that could have happened. Your after, rage. After finally making it across the rage that is rising right now. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> now that we finally got through this room, uh, this wraps up part two of our Wind Temple Let's Play.